the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thine all 
sufficient merit Raise us to thy glorious throne We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, you have given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy on us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. Christ Jesus is Lord. Christ Jesus is Lord. Christ Jesus is Lord. Christ Jesus is Lord. He has set us free from the law of sin and death in his name alone. Our salvation, He has set us free from the law of sin and death. In His name alone is our salvation. Christ Jesus is Lord. Christ Jesus is Lord. Christ Jesus is Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death. 
by his resurrection to life, grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal joys. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The lesson for today is recorded in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 to 21. If you are called on the Father who judges impartially according to the work of each person, conduct yourself during the time of your pilgrimage in reverence, because you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers not with things that pass away, such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like a lamb without blemish or spot. He was chosen before the foundation of the world, but revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you are belie believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm of the day is Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. The gospel lesson for today is recorded in Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village named Amias, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about all of these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing this, Jesus himself approached and began to walk along with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, What are you talking about as you walk along? Saddened, they stopped. One of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked them. They replied, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, 
a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. But we were hoping that he was going to redeem Israel. Not only that, but besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Also some women of our group amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. When they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb. They found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. He said to them, How foolish you are and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and to enter his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village where they were going, he acted as if he were going to travel further. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, since it is almost evening and the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. When he reclined at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and began giving it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Then he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us along the road, and while he was explaining the scriptures to us? They got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those who were with them assembled together. They were saying, The Lord really has been raised. He has appeared to Simon. They themselves described what had happened along the road and how they recognized him when he broke the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Sing of my Redeemer and His wondrous love to me On the cruel cross He suffered From the curse to set me free Sing, oh sing of my Redeemer his blood, He purchased me on the cross. He sealed my pardon, paid the debt, and made me free. I will tell the story how my lost estate to save in his boundless love and mercy he the ransom freely gave sing oh sing of my redeemer with his blood just me on the cross he sealed my pardon paid the debt and made me free I will praise my dear redeemer his triumphant 
the victory he giveth over sin and death and hell. Sing, O oh, sing of my Redeemer, with his blood he purchased me on the cross he sealed my pardon paid the dead and made me free sing oh sing of my redeemer with his blood he purchased me pardon, paid the debt and made me free. Beloved in Christ, Christ who died for your sins victoriously over sin, Christ who lives showing us that he is victorious over death. Christ, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the way and the truth and the life. May Christ, who is victorious over all, give you comfort and peace and joy, now and forever. Amen. Beloved in Christ, we are looking at the theme of living victoriously. And this morning, we're going to be looking at victorious living, living victoriously with reverent living. What is that? What is reverent living? Reverent living begins with the recognition that we are redeemed by Christ. And we'll get back to that. But not only that we are redeemed by Christ, but that we are living not for ourselves, but we are living for Christ. Now, this whole theme of living victoriously with reverent living, there's a popular television evangelist who describes living victoriously with these words. I declare that God's favor promotes and causes me to increase daily. He also says, the Lord takes pleasure in my total life prosperity, continues, because I am God's favorite. I prosper in every area of my life, spiritually, physically, financially, socially, and mentally. Because the favor of God shields me, no sickness or disease has a right to live in my body. And finally, wealth and riches are in my house because I am empowered with his anointing and favor to draw wealth. Well, beloved in Christ, uh, that is not in accordance with what we heard last week. All of those statements are about I, I, and what all these blessings are to come. Yes, some of them are spiritual. A lot of them are physical. And in the words before us last week, we heard that we are adopted. We weren't born into the family of Christ. Christ chose us and adopted us. We are born again. He is the one who caused us to be born again. We have an, an, an eternal inheritance waiting for us in heaven, not here on earth, but in heaven, created for us. And yes, we are going to have trials and we are going to have troubles, but we've been given a new way of life, a new perspective by Christ. We love God and others. We look at all these things through that perspective, focused only and specifically on the spiritual and not on the material. That is true victorious living. Jesus has done it all for us. Living victoriously is living in the victory won for us by Christ, not by demanding or expecting wealth and prosperity and health. Living victoriously is living in the light of Christ's forgiveness and mercy. It's living, it's living with a living faith and a living hope given to us by our living Lord. Living victoriously 
is not about wealth. It's not about these physical things, health and prosperity. Living victoriously is about reverent living, living in Christ, redeemed by Christ, and living for Christ. Well, we begin with our text this morning from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 21, and we'll begin with, we are redeemed by Christ, not with things that pass away, such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like a lamb without blemish or spot. He was chosen before the foundation of the world, but revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, beloved, living reverently. Living reverently begins with us recognizing that we are redeemed by Christ. We have been bought back. We don't deserve anything. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 reminds us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift but the undeserved gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our sin earns us death. Our vexation earns us death. When we break the state of emergency regulations, it brings us death. When we lust after someone, it brings us death. When we take something from someone that doesn't belong to, to us, it brings us death. When we harbor prejudices against people, it brings us death. When we post comments that are derogatory about people, it brings us death. But the gift of God is eternal life. That is what our victorious living is all about. It is about living in the victor who is Jesus Christ, living reverently redeemed by Christ. He is the lamb who died in our place worth more than gold or silver. He is the perfect sacrifice, the human who died, who is God for all sin. And his name is Jesus, redeemed by Christ. This was planned out. Your redemption was planned out before time began. That is how much he loves you. We are already favored by God. We cannot do anything to get any more favor from God. Even before the world was created, he favored you. You were in his mind so that he came to earth to sacrifice himself for you, to redeem you, to make you a victor, a victor in his victory. We believe and our belief comes through him. In verse 21 of our text, through him you are believers in God who raised him from the dead. Through him we have belief. Through him we have faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 17, so that faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard, comes through the word of Christ. It is Christ's message who that creates faith in our hearts. And first Peter chapter one verse three says, by his great mercy, he gave us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In this resurrection, in this victorious Christ, he gives us new birth. I didn't choose him, he chose me. You didn't choose him, he chose you. He favored you. He gave you his victory. This redemption that, he, that we have in him, it isn't owed us. It is totally a wonderful, magnificent gift from God. Jesus is our redeemer. We are redeemed by Christ. And it is, it's, as it says, who, God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. The redemption that we have is made sure in our Savior who is alive. Our Savior is not a dead idol made out of wood. Our 
Our salvation and eternal life does not depend upon a philosophy that came from the mind of a human being that is now dead and buried thousands of years ago. Our salvation is in the living God. We have this wonderful testimony of that in Revelation chapter 1 verses 4, 5, and 6. Grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is coming and from the seven spirits that are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his own blood and made us a kingdom and priest to God his Father. To him be glory and the power forever. Amen. You are redeemed you are a child of God. You are adopted. You are chosen. You are called. Our faith and our hope is in the living God. It is focused on the author of our faith. Our sin was placed on Christ and he died for us and he rose for us, for you and for me. Our faith is focused on Him. Our minds are focused on Him. Our responses to the world around us go through Him. Our victorious living is focused wholly on the One who is victorious. And because of that, we live for Him. We live for Him in thankfulness. We are living for Him not to earn favor. We are living for Him not to be blessed. We are living for Him not to receive material wealth and prosperity. We are living for Him in thankfulness because we are favored and chosen and adopted and we are the objects of His love and His mercy and His grace. In the words before us this morning from 1 Peter chapter 1, Verse 17, if you call on the Father who judges impartially according to the work of each person, conduct yourselves during the time of your pilgrimage in reverence because you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers. We live in reverence out of thankfulness because God has redeemed us from our empty way of life. We are redeemed living for Christ. Our conduct, our words, our actions, our thoughts, everything is for Jesus. Victorious living doesn't mean that we will get what we expect from God. Victorious living means living, conducting our lives in accordance with Jesus out of thankfulness to Him not to earn favor. My brothers and sisters in Christ, dearly beloved in the Lord, we live for Jesus, not for ourselves. We live in thankfulness to Jesus, not expecting favor. We live for Jesus, not expecting a life without suffering. We live for Jesus, knowing that we have an, an eternal inheritance in heaven. We live for Jesus because we have been redeemed by him, the blood through the blood of the lamb. Redeemed to live for Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are pilgrims here. We are not focused on settling down, building a house and getting a job and the promotion and wealth. We are not focused on all of those things, nor expanding to increase or prolong our life here. But this life is but a short pilgrimage, a speck in the eye. As we move toward our heavenly home, our inheritance that the Lord has prepared for us, the Lord says, do not lose that inheritance through your con conduct. Therefore, live for Christ, a full life, not an empty one. I was handed down an empty life by my mother and father. My sinful mother and father gave birth to me and they gave me sin. I was born with it. I was born with a default and the default is an empty way of life, following the law, trying to do better, trying to be the best, trying to one up someone else, always thinking about me, always thinking about me, 
all of the time. That is what I inherited from my parents, from my forefathers, and that is what you did too. That's the empty way of life. Selfish pride, not selflessness. We inherited the sinful nature and this empty way of life. And the Lord is saying, turn from it. You who are redeemed, live a reverent life, live a victorious life, live redeemed, live a life of the born again. Our reverent living is a new way of life. Our, our, our reverent living is not guided by feeling or emotion because we will be distracted by that and we will be led astray by that. Reverent living, living reverently is being guided by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. Now we ask ourselves, is what I'm doing showing love to the Lord and to my neighbor? That's the question we should always have in front of our mind as we live for Christ. That is living reverently, consistently asking ourselves that question. Our living victoriously, living reverently means that we are free to serve. We are free to sacrifice. We are redeemed. We have been purchased from our selfish sinfulness. And we are now therefore focused on our spiritual life of service, of giving, of love. How blessed we are. How truly blessed we are. The redeemed by Christ living for Christ. Living for Christ means that our prayer will be like this. It's a prayer written about 2,000 years ago. It's an amazing prayer. May it be yours and may it be mine as well. Lord, inspire us to read your scriptures and to meditate upon them day and night. We beg you to give us real understanding of what we need, that we in turn may put its precepts into practice. Yet we know that understanding and good intentions are worthless unless rooted in your graceful love. So we ask that the words of Scripture may also be not just signs on a page, but channels of grace into our hearts. Amen. Beloved in Christ, you who by grace are living victoriously, you who by the mercy of God are living victoriously with reverent living, may you rejoice that you have been redeemed by Christ and may this week be one of living for Christ. Amen. And may God's grace and his mercy and his peace be with you now and always. Amen. Let us join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Shall walk.